Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster and most welcome guests. Imagine for a second you're in a photography class, okay? You took 12 great pictures of something you really, really like. They are really great pictures, but you only have to choose one. You can take away it. The thing is, you can do it both ways. First one, you can choose your picture, but you have four days if you want to change your mind and choose another one. Okay, and the second one, you can choose your picture, but that's it. You can't change it. It's your picture forever. You can't have the other one. So think about it, which one would you choose of the picture, which way? So you can raise your hands in one or two, which way would you choose? Okay, so actually this experiment has been conducted with students in America and 66% of the students, so two thirds, actually uh, have chosen the first one. So they have chosen two. The possibility to change their mind they wanted. However, the results show that people who actually didn't have the choice could have changed the picture, actually really enjoyed the picture, were happy about their choice. But the people who have the possibility to change, they actually were wondering about did I choose the right one? Did I left, leave the wrong one? And maybe not, I don't know. And quite unsatisfied with the choice of picture. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? So choices, yeah, we all know that choices. It's quite good, it's valuable in our society. I mean, some women in some countries, they don't have the choice for who they're going to marry. I'm lucky enough to have children, my husband, there's no pressure. Uh, and lots of choice of men, so yeah, would I return my husband? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to my point. So choices, yeah, yeah. I mean choices. It's good. We think it's good because I mean more freedom. I mean more freedom. I mean we can be happier. So why not? Why? Sometimes we're not that happy because too many choices are exhausting. Because it makes us unhappy sometimes, and it leads us to. Breathing situation. I mean, too many choices. You can't choose. Wow. Uh, researchers call it uh, choice um, overload. And yeah, too many choices. Too many options. Infinite options. Actually, increases cost of time and effort. Uh, gathering all the information we need to make the good choice. <sighs> yeah, it is exhausting. An example of this is a few months ago I had to change my phone. So I went on the internet looking for what was on the market for my budget. Too many websites, too many choices of phones, and once I Got one phone who looks quite good. Two unread reviews, mixed reviews. It's Rebecca saying it's absolutely amazing, you should buy it. And Robert saying it's absolutely cheap, don't buy it, avoid it. Well, who do I trust? I mean, women seem more trustworthy overall, but the <laughs> two women there. I wasn't convinced, so I needed to speak face to face with someone. So I, I went to the city centre, many shops, so many different advice, so many different offers. I was 
just so aware of, and I was, I was a bit fed up. I was just exhausted. So I freeze. I didn't buy it. I waited a few months. And when my phone actually died, I decided to take the first one I saw on the internet the first day. It wasn't perfect. It was good. It, it did the job, just received call, it was okay. But I realized that the more choice we are, the higher the expectation is. And I wanted the perfection. Even if I wanted baby stuff, I realized I wanted the perfect form. Same for a relationship. They want the perfection. It doesn't exist. So, I buried Schwartz, which is a type, well, here's a psychology, it's clean. Uh, it is the parent of the choice. Quite interestingly, the secret of happiness. And we all want to know the secret of happiness, do we? Um, and he said it's low expectations. <laughs> wow. I'm the person who's got high expectation. I mean, I've got high expectation in life, I've got high expectation in myself, and I've got high expectation in others. Wow, how difficult. Oh yeah, I've been disappointed so much, so why not try low expectation for once? And I hope you didn't have high expectation about this speech tonight. <coughs> I didn't disappoint you. Station was to finish on time, which almost did. Oh, uh, here I am. Thank you. Thank you, Stella.